Grounding. What is grounding? Grounding or earthing involves direct contact with the earth's surface, allowing electrons from the ground to flow into the body. This process is thought to neutralize positively charged free radicals, which are unstable molecules that can cause damage and inflammation in the body. Essentially, it's like the earth acts as a giant antioxidant, providing a stable electrical environment that may help to improve health and reduce inflammation. Now, what does that mean in lay terms? So if we think of the various molecules that are throughout the body, we can think of them as capacitors or little batteries. And most people can understand that most batteries have a positive and a negative charge. And when those two are in balance, then it's stabilized, stable energy. So now let's look at the molecules in our body. If those cells are mostly positively charged, that means inflammation, that equates to inflammation. Those cells that are, that are highly positively charged are looking for its counterpart, it's looking to be stabilized or neutralized with electrons, which have a negative charge. And so if you can imagine all of that energy, that positively charged energy lining the inside of the cell, looking for the negative electron, then that's like a magnet that's being drawn to its opposite charge. That's why they call them free radicals because they radically move around looking for some sort of balance. So where we can get that balance or that negative charge is from the earth. The, the surface of the earth is lined with an endless amount, an infinite amount of negative electron. So the moment we attach our body, our skin is highly conductive, and at the end of the day, we are electrical beings. And so uh, most of the processes that need to occur in the body happen from this, this charge, this electrical charge that happens constantly in and out of our body. And so it should make sense that if we can neutralize our cells, we can stabilize our cells, then all the processes that have to happen in the body end up having a much better opportunity to do so. Now, inflammation is at the root of most diseases that we deal with today. And so inflammatory disease can, can be attached to most anything that we have to deal with. It would make sense to reduce inflammation by any means necessary. One of the first things I do is to ground myself. If you're familiar with being on the beach, walking barefoot, you might recall that that feels good, right? It, you have such a really nice feeling from going to the beach. And you can chalk that up to the fact that you're on vacation or you're not working and you have nature all around you. Great. But have you ever considered what that does electrically and chemically throughout the body? What you're doing, is, because especially at the beach, that's the best opportunity for grounding. Salt water is highly conductive and all of the, the, the minerals through the salts and things like that, those metals, that makes it highly conductive. And so you pair that with a body that is looking for electrons, that gives you the best opportunity to ground yourself. At the root of pain and disease and stress, all of these things make us highly positively charged. Therefore, our body voltage gets higher and higher and higher. In fact, many times when I do a body voltage test with a volt voltmeter or a voltimeter, I'll do that here in a moment. Sometimes if I've been traveling, I'm jet lagged, or I've just finished a workout, I'll see my numbers get way up into like the 800s. That means that I'm highly positively charged, but has a kind of a negative connotation to it. And the moment, almost instantaneously, the moment that I place my body, any part of my body, because the, the skin is highly conductive, I just need a small bit of my body to touch a grounding source, and then you see that body voltage get all the way down to zero or near zero. Whether or not you believe in EMFs and its impact on our, our human biology, there is an effect. And so the more electronics we have around us, the more stress we have, the more inflamed we are, therefore the more charge we have. So if you wanna bring all that down, just ground yourself. And if you can't get outside and do that for most of your day, then you might want to consider doing some sort of grounding indoors. And that's why I have a lot of these, these accessories that allow me to ground constantly. 
So I sleep, which is we should spend most of our day sleeping. That gives me the opportunity to ground most of my day. And if you notice here, just in case you were wondering about what I was reading when I started this, there's a book called Earthing, which is, it says here, the most important health discovery ever. And it's free, right? The book's not free, but the information is free. And the technology of earthing and grounding is free. As long as you have an opportunity, opportunity to get outside and ground yourself. Another one, this is a new book that I've uh, just started reading. I'm almost finished. It's called Get Grounded, Get Well. There's uh, plenty of information and research online. This one here is called The Mother Effect. Sorry, The Mother Earth Effect. I think it's pretty cool. These women's life-changing stories are so important that Mother Earth Effect could be the most important book that any woman could ever read. So for, for all you ladies out there that want to understand all the processes processes around grounding you've got that and then last but not least at least for today it's called barefoot wisdom so of course this appealed to me because I speak a lot about the benefits of being barefoot actually barefoot for all of the the toe strength and the ankle mobility and stability throughout the body and how well being barefoot can actually improve and optimize your performance but then this also touches on the effects of grounding while being barefoot and so I want to take you through what it means to actually ground indoors to test some of these products. And all of this is just an example of, of the amount of research that is out there. And whether you, you feel like this is going to get you over the fence and getting into grounding, I would say just try it for yourself. A lot of the tests that I'm doing, you can do at home yourself. You don't have to believe me or you don't have to believe anyone online, but just try it out. Try it for 30 days. Try sleeping grounded, getting outside nature a little bit more and see if that helps you. So now we're going to test. So here we have what's called a continuity tester. So that's what this is. And what we're going to do is complete the circuit by connecting to a grounded source. And you've probably seen the, uh, the tester, the, the tester that well, they call it a socket tester, where you plug it into the wall and the two orange lights come on, that means you have a, con a correct ground, and that's what we're looking for. So I've done that already. Now what I'm gonna do is test this part of it. Okay, so we turn this on, make sure that it's working. Green light flashes, we're good to go. So what I'm gonna do is test the floor. You see the green light comes on, that means it's working, okay? Now, if I take my feet off of the grounding mat, then you'll see that I have no, oops, I was barely touching it and it came on. No charge, I touch my toe, charge. No charge, charge. So that's the basic test there. That is one of those tests where I say to a person, um, that's a level of yes or no, one and zero, right? Is the surface that you're testing, is it conductive? Does it allow for the flow of negative electrons or electrons to go into said source. So that's the yes or no. That's one of the most basic tests. The next level of test would be the pure ground, ground test meter. This is one of, the, uh, one of my favorites to use because it shows the level of resistance of the electrons from the earth. And so what's, what's good about this is that if it's high, that means high resistance, which equates to you not being grounded. When I put my finger, because remember you only need one small part of your skin to be in contact with the source. So I'll do this. And if I'm not connected to a grounding source, you see it says high resistance and you hear that beep. Now, what should happen if I put my foot or any body part onto the grounding mat, then that immediately goes to low resistance, which means superb conductivity. No ground, ground. No ground, ground. So now this is a voltmeter or multimeter, multimeter, whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> what we're gonna do is now turn this on to the V, and then I'm gonna connect the black cable, which is which is right here under calm. 
I'm going to connect that to the grounding source. So my grounding source is this mat underneath my feet here or at my feet. So I connect that alligator clip. And then this red cable is what we're going to use. This red alligator clip is what we're going to use to test our body voltage without a grounding source. So you see the numbers here. I'm going to hold my fingers together and we're going to get a readout. My feet are not on the grounding source and it's reading at just over 300. So 0 0.3, 0 0.308, 0 0.309, maybe it goes up, maybe it goes down a bit. And all I'm doing is holding on to the alligator clip and it's giving me the measurement of my body voltage right now. The moment that I put my feet onto the grounding mat, you should see that number drop down quite considerably low or zero, okay? So not, right now it's showing zero because my feet are connected. If I take my feet off the grounding mat, then that number goes back up to 308, 0.308. So there's no trickery here. All I'm doing is connecting my feet to the ground. That goes to zero. I take my feet off and it goes back to where it was. And so you might be wondering, why doesn't it keep up with that, that balanced charge, that electrical stabilization? It's because it takes a while for it to work throughout the entire body. We can get an instantaneous stabilization, but the longer you do it, the better it is for you. And what I think, the, the way to describe that for me, is you're giving yourself the best opportunity for your body to do what it needs to do in that period of time. So when we can suppress all of that inflammation, the cortisol, all the different chemical processes that happen in the body, then you get a chance to allow your body to relax you. You get a chance to tap into the parasympathetic nervous system response, which is the rest and digest. And the opposite of that is the sympathetic nervous system response, which is fight or flight or freeze. And we can't exist in both of those states of nervous system regulation. We can't stay in both of those systems at once. It's one or the other. It's black or white, it's ones and zeros. So you wanna give yourself the best opportunity to be calm because that's when your body gets a chance to digest. So if you, if you have stomach issues, you have inflammatory bowel disease, or you have any kind of uh, issue when it comes to the gut, well, think about that. Your body is probably inflamed, you're probably dealing with stress, you need to calm yourself, get grounded, therefore suppressing all of that inflammation. And then that's when you get the opportunity to, to see what's happening in your gut. And then the same thing goes with sleeping. If you find yourself laying in bed and unable to fall asleep because you're thinking about this, or you're thinking about that, we don't exist in a sympathetic state and a parasympathetic state at the same time. So if you want the best opportunity to, to have melatonin come into the body, suppress cortisol. There's a number of things you can do throughout your day, of course, not having caffeine too late, eating the right foods, not eating too close to bedtime. These are some of the obvious things, I think. But what about grounding? When you're lying there for hopefully for hours, whether you're sleeping or you're just resting, give yourself an opportunity to ground yourself, to allow for the stabilization so that all the other processes like glymphatic drainage, which is, the, which is the clearing out of all the waste products that happen throughout our day from thinking and stressing. We get all this, this byproduct, these toxins that build up in the brain that really only get cleared out when we sleep. And so again, to give yourself the best opportunity to actually sleep and to rest, you wanna make sure that you're stabilized electrically. I hope this was informative. And I'll just finish by saying that this is one of the most profound things that we can do, maybe we should do, and I would love to see this more throughout the world. And just imagine going to the hospital and being on a bed and being able to get grounded as your first way to get healthy, right? I mean, we have the access to have plugs. All modern buildings and homes have a grounding port because they have to, they have to be up to code. Part of being up to code is to make sure that it's grounded first. And so if you don't want your, if you don't want to plug in an appliance and then have it spark and cause fires, imagine that analogy to the body. Fire in the home sort of 
to me feels like fire in the body, which is inflammation. So let's reduce inflammation. Let's get healthier. Let's embrace this technology that is technically free from the earth. And then let's start to build that into our lives. Thank you.